candles are burning I'm Lon, I'm the librarian here at the Bethesda Library, and today I'm going to read Hanukkah at Valley Forge by Stephen Krensky, illustrated by Greg Harlan. The general stood tall on the stony ridge at Valley Forge, surveying his troops. The December night was clear, but the wind cut cruelly through his heavy coat. The general shook his head, struggling, shrugging the cold aside. It was his men he was worried about. For more than two years, his army had been at war. The general had not expected the fighting to be easy. War was never easy, but some of the soldiers lacked weapons to defend themselves. Others were without coats or shoes, and nobody had enough to eat. An army of skeletons, one witness called them. The snow crunched dryly under the general's boots as he walked through the camp. In one crude hut, a young soldier was sitting at a small table. The general watched from the doorway in silence. The soldier was lighting a candle. The flame flickered for a moment and then grew steadily. All the while, the soldier was speaking softly, too softly for the general to catch his words. The general cleared his throat and the soldier jumped up. General Washington, he cried. His commander in chief nodded. A cold night, is it not, he said. The soldier swallowed nervously. Truly it is, but no colder than my home back in Poland. He paused. And there, not, not only is the weather cold, the laws are cold as well. If my family were to light a candle tonight, they would have to do it in secret. But that will not stop them, for this is the first night of Hanukkah. Hanukkah, the general repeated. The word was unfamiliar to him. The name for a celebration I was just finishing a prayer in Hebrew, sir, in honor of what once happened. Ah, then you are of the children of Abraham. The general's gaze was intent. Tell me more of Hanukkah. The soldier stared at the candle for a moment, and then he began to speak. Over 2,000 years ago, said the soldier, my people, the people of Israel, were ruled by Antiochus, a Greek king from far away. He did not permit them to pray to their god and follow their customs. He wanted them to worship the Greek gods. General Washington nodded. The fight for liberty is an ancient one, and no one likes squirming under the thumb of a distant king. The soldier looked at his candles. In my homeland, I could not follow my beliefs either. That's why I came to America. But the people of Israel were not so fortunate. In a village near Jerusalem, the soldiers ordered them to bow to the Greek idols and eat from a slaughtered pig. Both of, things, of these things were forbidden. In protest, Mattathias, the high priest, refused to obey. And when the ceremony continued without him, he angrily drew his sword. In the fight that followed, lives were lost, though Mattathias escaped. He and his five sons, the Maccabees, became the leaders of a rebellion. Some said they were foolish, risking their lives in a doomed cause. But the Maccabees fought on. Their force was small, but they did not give up. The general sighed. He too was mired in an uphill fight. Independence from England had been declared 18 months earlier, in July 1776. But declaring it had not ended the war. True, his forces had won some battles, but the British still controlled the major cities and much of the countryside. I understand, he said. We too have a cruel enemy who leaves us only with the choice of brave resistance or abject submission. There was one battle, the soldier went on, where the army of the Maccabees were greatly outnumbered. But Mattathias' son Judah rallied the troops. He reminded them that battles are not won or lost solely on the strength in the field. Our enemies are not invincible, Judah told them, for the, they trust in arms and acts of daring, but we trust in the Almighty God. Judah and his army won the fight, and many more followed. After three years, though, the Maccabees finally drove the enemies away. The Israelites rejoiced in their new freedom and set about cleaning their temple. They were eager to worship again in the ways of their forefathers. But when it came time to light the temple menorah, they could find only enough oil for one day. That was troubling. 
once lit, the menorah was never supposed to go out. Still, they did not want to wait any longer, so they lighted the menorah and trusted that God would help them find more oil as quickly as possible. The search for oil was not easy. One day passed quickly and none was found, yet the menorah remained lit. Another day went by and still there was no oil, but the flames remained strong. Three days, four days, the hunt continued. But all the fighting and destruction made finding things very difficult. In all, eight days passed before any new oil arrived. And in all that time, the lights of the menorah never went out. The soldier blew on his hands to warm them. Truly a miracle happened there, so every year we remember this festival of lights. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, and therefore I lit only the first candle of the Hanukkah menorah, the Hanukkah. I will use this special candle, the Shamash, to light one candle each night until there are eight. Eight candles to honor the eight days the oil lasted. The general made ready to leave. Your tale is a brave one, and your candles have brightened my evening. Perhaps we are not as lost as our enemies would have us believe. I rejoice in the Maccabees' success, though it is long past. He smiled grimly, and it pleases me to think that miracles may still be possible. The soldier nodded. The world would be a poor place without them. So it would, said General Washington, with a lighter mood than he had felt in many a day, and he continued on his rounds. The wind quieted, and the Hanukkah candles burned long into the night. The story of George Washington and Hanukkah is based on facts, but the tale itself must be taken on faith. It is known that in December 1778, Washington had lunch at the home of Michael Hart, a Jewish merton in Easton, Pennsylvania. In the middle of Hanukkah, when Hart began to explain the holiday to the general, Washington replied that he knew it already. He then told the merchant and his family of meeting a Polish soldier at Valley Forge the year before. It was Hart's stepdaughter, Louisa, who reportedly committed the story to her diary, which was later recounted in Rabbi I. Harold Schaffman's book, Jews on the Frontier. Since Washington himself kept no diary during the war years, he left no personal record of the event. Certainly, though, the story fits with the curiosity and reactions Washington displayed on later occasions. In that spirit, some of Washington's dialogue here has been borrowed from his own writings in the hope of echoing his real voice. And that was Hanukkah at Valley Forge by Stephen Kerensky with illustrations by Greg Harlan. Welcome everyone. I'm council member Lori Bush and on behalf of the mayor, the town council and the 170,000 people who call Kerry home, welcome and happy Hanukkah. We are going to have a celebration and this one is going to be uh, looking a little bit different this year. The observance of our Festival of Lights is socially distant and virtual. So we're going to be keeping our distance, but we still want to celebrate with you. Now, if we think about the story of Hanukkah, it parallels where some might say that we are today, a dark time. Then there was only enough oil for a single night. But somehow, through the miracle, a burning flame lit up the dark days and nights for eight nights providing us now with what we call a symbol of hope and gladness and sharing. Now, hope and sharing is something that we all need a little bit of in today's time, along with perseverance and faith. The hope we see as we light the first light, but the sharing happens when the first candle lights the next and the next and so on. The candle itself loses nothing by lighting another candle. In fact, when this happened, the light is intensified. The darkness recedes and hope comes along. I hope that you will do the same and bring some light into the lives of others around you, your friends, your family, by reaching out, being socially distant or virtually, and making sure that we all keep safe in this time of Hanukkah. Together, I hope that we will all see brighter days ahead. Now, may all your days be filled with light. And our next speaker is the president of the Jewish Federation of Raleigh and Kerry, Jamie Eliahu.
Thank you, Lori. On behalf of the Jewish Federation of Raleigh Carey, I am honored to be here tonight to help light the Hanukkah menorah with the town of Carey. As the Jewish Federation has been celebrating Hanukkah over the past several days, we've been talking about sharing stories of light. As I think back on my personal time celebrating Hanukkah, I think back on some of the stories of my childhood celebrating Hanukkah with my grandparents at their home with my entire family. My sister and my cousins and I would gather all of the presents and put them specifically together on my grandparents' fireplace and on their rug and we would have latkes together and my grandparents would make applesauce. My grandfather peeled and cut the apples and my grandma would actually cook them to make the applesauce. And today my dad does the same thing and makes applesauce for my kids. And this weekend we were able to have a socially distant family Hanukkah gathering in my backyard. Many of us are doing things like that today, this time celebrating Hanukkah, to try and just keep some of that Hanukkah spirit that we've grown up with and had this whole time in our lives in this time that is so much darker and so different than anything we've ever experienced before. As we have spent 2020 dealing with COVID, um, the Jewish Federation has dealt with so many people in need. And we continue to do that and reach out to everyone so that we can help people throughout the community in Raleigh, Cary, and all of the surrounding areas. It's so important that we all reach out to our friends, family, neighbors, people who we may not reach out to on a normal basis. But during this time, it's important that we look to these people and make sure that we're all doing okay. Just share a little bit of the light with them. Thank you and happy Hanukkah. And now I would like to introduce Rabbi Ariel Ettery from Beth Shalom congregation in Cary. Hello. Good evening, everyone. It's, um, it's always great to be here and celebrate Hanukkah year after year with our fellow rabbis and all the community. Um, but I feel that this year is especially good to celebrate Hanukkah specifically because Hanukkah is not really a story about uh, a little bit of oil. It's a story about a great miracle, and that miracle is resilience. What we celebrate in Hanukkah is a small group of people that overcome terrible odds and survives even an empire. But the resilience is not just for the Maccabees back then, the resilience is for the 2,000 years since the Maccabees until now and how a small Jewish community has managed to keep our traditions, keep our heritage and uh, bring it even to a new land and a new place like here in America. And that resilience is what we celebrate in Hanukkah. And I think that Hanukkah tells us what's the key to that resilience. The key is the connection. Just like the Hanukkah lights cannot be lit if one light doesn't light the other, as Lori was saying a minute ago, this is how our resilience happens, is when we connect with each other, light each other's lights, offer mutual support, and do everything we need to do to support each other. And these days of COVID, the darkness of COVID is over us, and the light really is... Uh, coming from our mutual support, from doing our parts, from those who start wearing the masks, to all the different things that we're doing to support each other. And uh, we just know something about resilience, right? We have uh, been through a lot and are still here. And uh, so the message for this Hanukkah is 
let's uh, really take in the message of Hanukkah. When we light our menorah, we see that what started with one little light a few nights ago keeps growing and growing and growing. And just like that uh, light was not extinguished for 2,000 years, uh, we can go through all of this and go through the light when we support each other. So, uh, happy Hanukkah, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. And next time, we'll be without any of all this and we'll be here together in person as well. And my pleasure to introduce Rabbi Kotler. Good evening and happy Hanukkah. Please join in with me this evening and sing the blessings together as we kindle the sixth night of Hanukkah. And as we have in mind that just as we have learned that this disease is so contagious, it spreads so easily, we believe that the power of light, the power of good is equally if not stronger. And when we are full of light, when we are full of zest and joy, that will spread to others around us. Baruch atah Hashem Eloyekeinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishonu B'mitzvoh Yisav V'tzivonu Lehadlik Ner Hanukkah Baruch Hato Hashem Eloyekeinu Melech HaOlam Sheyoso Nisim Lavoseinu Bayamim Ha-heim Bihizman Hazeh are burning low One for each night they shed a sweet light to remind us of days long ago Hanukkah, oh Hanukkah, come light the menorah, let's have a party, we'll all dance the horror, gather around the table we'll give you a treat so we will need to play with the lots of sweet and while we are playing the candles are burning low One for each night they shed a sweet light To remind us of days long ago One for each night they shed a sweet light